Thanos versus Pac-Man. You can't use mustard for that. Fight. Steve Weiner here from GetRubix.com, and today we're going to be talking about a very important part of the Intune tenant to tenant device migration process. This is going to be the provisioning package. So, you know, Pac-Man wins. <laughs> Okay, so the biggest question I get asked when we talk about the tenant to tenant migration process that we've been discussing here is how do we get the device to the new tenant before the user signs in? And this is where, uh, this is kind of the crux of the whole solution. It's the uh, Windows Configuration Designer provisioning packages. A lot of folks remember these from the early days of Windows 10, right? Uh, 1511, then into 2016. Altogether, not a really super useful tool in the end because it was pre-autopilot, but then autopilot came to fruition and we had less and less of a need for it. However, the provisioning packages have a very unique ability to uh, contain what's called a bulk primary refresh token. Um, I'm going to put a link below uh, for some really smart folks that uh, kind of dissected the whole process. But the important thing to know is it is a um, token basically that allows the machine to join an Azure AD tenant. And that is the piece that allows us to do what we do. So let's start by talking about putting this together. Um, there's two methods we're going to talk about today because the, the tool is uh, kind of known for not being 100% reliable. In most cases, you'll be okay doing it. We'll call it the easy way and the more complex way. So we're going to take a look at the easy way first. So I'm going to open up the Windows Store, Microsoft Store, whatever they call this thing. Um, who's playing Starfield? Hit me up in the comments. If you search for configuration, you'll see it. This Windows Configuration Designer app. So this is the app we want. We're going to go ahead and grab that. So let's go ahead and open this up and take a look. Um, so here we go. What we want to do is we want to provision desktop devices. Um, I'm going to call this uh, migration, or I'll just call it migrate, because that's, I think, what I ended up calling it in the GitHub repo. Oh, OK, so we're just going to walk through some simple steps. You can see this. This is a lot of pre-setup of a device. You can name your device. I'm going to go ahead and name mine now. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I'm going to leave it. I'm going to leave it serial number. Uh, that's good enough for me. I don't need to make this complicated. So it'll take the serial number and make that the name of the device. We're not going to touch anything else here. We're going to really keep this simple. I'm going to turn off the Wi-Fi config. Um, I don't want to touch any network configuration. Account management. This is the part, really the only part here that's important. We're going to hit enroll in Azure AD refresh AED credentials in case we're logged in with something else. And you're going to get a bulk token that expires. Um, I believe it's about six months out. So what you're going to want to do is have global. Well, you don't need global admin, um, although it's a good idea to have it to make sure we don't have permission issues. You want to hit get bulk token. Now you're going to sign in to the destination tenant. So what we're doing is we're creating basically a pass for the device to get in the new tenant. So I'm going to do that here. Um, we're going to say uh, Steve at stevecapacity.com. You can see it's got the new tenant, so it knows where I'm going. Um, I don't want to sign in to this device with this. I literally just want to grab a token. So this is where trouble sometimes start. Now, in this case, you can see the bulk token was fetched successfully. If for some reason that doesn't happen, oh, mom texted me. If for some reason this doesn't happen, a very simple tr troubleshooting step is you want to go to your entry tenant and sign in with uh, those credentials of the destination. And then leave me alone. I said, leave me alone. Okay, we go to applications. Okay. And then we're going to go to enterprise applications. All applications. And we should see the Windows configuration designer. So even if you hit an error, you should still see this here because it creates a service principle. All you have to do in that case is click on the permissions and 
grant consent. Um, so you can see I already have that. Sometimes it doesn't, sometimes it doesn't. But yeah, if you basically get to this point and this says couldn't get token, or if it says, uh, I forget what the error says. Sometimes it might say, uh, you know, if the error says uh, couldn't get it, token error, couldn't refresh, whatever it is, just literally go to your destination tenant, find it in enterprise applications, grant consent, and you'll be in good shape. Okay, going back to the tool, once we have the token, I think it's a good idea to create a local admin account here. Whether you have one, whether you don't, there will be a point between the tenants um, where the device will be in a, a limbo, so to speak, and it won't be part of either tenant. So if something were to go wrong, we need a way in. So I'm gonna put in a migration admin account, okay? And obviously give it a password. And uh, this way, what, before we enter the new tenant, we'll have this local account. So if we have any trouble, you have it there. If you don't want to do that, that's fine. But know that you can. That's it. We're going to next our way through to the end. And we're going to hit create on the package. You can see it was created to this output place. Now, this is all we need. That's the PPKG file, right? And as uh, if you've already taken a look at our, our, our GitHub repo, um, actually going to pull that up so you can see in the process here if we were to look at start migrate so again you see we have the migrate ppkg that's the file we're referencing when we get down to the next step which we're going to talk about soon we'll need in step nine that's the file we're installing so there it is it's kind of like uh, demystified what that ppkg is if you're not familiar so it's literally that file you don't need anything else you just need the ppkg okay so the more complex way of creating the provisioning package involves kind of taking apart what's in a ppkg so let's do that first so this is the one we just made. So you can see we have the actual provisioning package, but then we also have this customizations.xml. So why don't we take a look at that? So the customization XML is basically a manifest of what we just made, right? So you can see here that some of the things we just did, right? So the username, migration admin, it's showing my password in plain text. So maybe that's why this wasn't such a popular tool. Um, puts it in the admin user group for me. You can see this is where the computer name was set. Um, this is kind of the big part here. So look at this, BPRT, bulk primary refresh token. That's the whole point of what we wanted. So that's why we're using this tool. This is what will give us access to the new tenant. Um, so if we were to look at this, it's not hard to imagine, you know, you'd be able to take this XML and make your own uh, package. And that's what some folks have done, right? So, so I don't want to botch the gentleman's name, but it's at Dr. Azure AD. So, you know, he's serious and, uh, he's the author of the AAD internals PowerShell module. That's basically a, uh, a series of, uh, PowerShell scripts that allows you to get your own bulk primary refresh token. So shout out to Dr. Azure AD and, uh, another link to his work will be in this below. I'm going to put a link to the high level process. Um, of course the man himself, Michael Niehaus detailed this, how to use, um, the process of getting the bulk primary refresh token and injecting it into your next XML. So it's a great read. I'm going to put it here below and I'm going to take you through some of it. Okay, so you can get a version of the configuration designer from the Windows ADK, the assessment deployment uh, toolkit. All right, so we're gonna grab that and we're gonna set this up. So we're gonna install this real quick, basically so we have the program to create the PPKG. Now, no, we're not gonna send you anonymous data. You're gonna collect it either way. Okay, we don't need any of this. All we need is the configuration designer. So I don't think we're, you know, downloading a whole, there's a ton of tools in here. Great tool for a lot of other things, but we do not have the time in this uh, video to make it happen. So all we want highlighted is configuration designer. Should take about 46, 47 megs. Let's go ahead and install that. And once we have it, we're in good shape. Boom, real time. We didn't even need to fast forward that. We can take an XML template like this, and I actually went ahead and did that. So let's take a look at it. Oop. So this is, here we go. 
So if you look on the right here, this is a template based on uh, the PPKG XML. So it generates a GUID. We can do that by essentially putting the new GUID uh, command right in here. That's not a big deal if this isn't PowerShell. And you can see I've left a variable for the BPRT. Okay, so let's open up PowerShell. And we're just going to go grab that module. Install module AD internal source. So AD internals is the PowerShell module. Um, a whole bunch of stuff, but it basically allows us to create the primary refresh token, the bulk primary refresh token without the tool. Um, okay, so now we have that. We can import the module internals and here we go okay now that aad internals are installed <clears throat> we're going to go ahead and pull up uh, the michael niehaus script generate aad package.ps1 um <clears throat> you know some of these pieces can be taken out and, and they're pretty useful um as far as um seeing how to make the bulk primary refresh token it's pretty cool there is an xml um in here already right so an xml template with that variable in there for when we grab the bulk primary refresh token we're generating a new GUID for the provisioning package and basically if we just look at what's happening here <clears throat> we're passing a file name obviously you can do a full path there or you can put yourself in a path uh we're testing to see if the adk was installed and where it was so we we call it later and here we're calling the executable and we're essentially just passing that xml file we made through to the uh, executable and we're going to output a package so i am in this temp folder right here where i just have the the script already and you can see once we run this it's going to generate a few things it's going to generate an xml that's going to be customized based off this string here with our uh bprt in there and it's also going to create a package for us so we're going to go ahead and call this script here and pass it through the um file name parameter which of course i just want to call i'll call this one manual migrate <clears throat> differentiated from the other one okay so the first thing it is we're calling that aed internals module so we're going to off to that this is similar to you know authenticating to uh your azure tenant or the graph where you use the destination credentials give it the password we got the access token. It's going to generate the bulk token and it stops there. But let's look in that folder now. Look at that. So this was the XML that was created. OK, what do we got there? I got some old stuff there. So you can see the XML that was created based on our template <clears throat> is very similar to basically what we have from the package itself. We have our BPRT, right? We have our settings. Um, <clears throat> I didn't add in the uh, the username and computer name. We can do that if we want to. You can just add that in manually. Um, uh, and then ultimately we have the same package, the PPKG file that we can use. Okay, so for step nine, all we really have to do is call that package, that provisioning package. So I'm gonna write host, installing provisioning, package for new Azure ED tenants. <clears throat> and this is a built-in command. This is install provisioning package, package path. Why is it that popular? And that's going to be our, um, our local path, right? Come on, local path. And we're going to call it call the migrate PPKJ. Because remember, that was already listed in here that we're going to put in the local path. Uh, we are going to do a quiet install and a force. And that is what is going to place the device in our destination Azure AD tenant. So a lot of background work talking about the package for just the two lines in step nine. But you know what? That's definitely one of the if not the most important part all right so now you know how we point the device to the new tenant all that's left to do is get rid of the old objects from tenant a and 
you know, reboot this thing. So next time. One.